Thank you for joining us. I'm Dario Fair. Wisconsin's Republican controlled Joint Finance Committee met this past Tuesday approving a plan for the use of more than $36 million in opioid settlement funds. The money will prevent and reduce the risk of opioid use across Wisconsin's most vulnerable communities. But Governor Tony Evers called the committee into a special session that same day to discuss critical funding for PFAS contamination and Western Wisconsin's health care crisis. But that never made it onto the agenda. Governor Tony Evers calls to hold a special session where in response to the committee choosing not to consider funding requests it vetoed months ago. The governor urging the committee to release the $125 million in already approved investments to fight PFAS chemicals in drinking water statewide. Evers also wanted the committee to release $15 million to address the health care crisis in Chippewa Valley after two hospitals in the area closed down. Evers said in a statement his office submitted plans months ago for how the fund should be used, but Republican committee members still have not given a timeline for releasing that money. I had a chance to speak with Representative Tip McGuire, a Democrat on the committee. He says the committee has the ability to allocate that money without Governor Evers signing off on any bills passed through the legislature. Are Democrats on the committee willing to make some concessions in terms of what Republicans are asking to move forward on these funding proposals? Well, you see, here's the interesting thing is that Republicans keep on saying you know, that they had these bills that the governor had signaled his disagreement on specific provisions for that didn't get through, but that actually doesn't impact the allocation of these dollars. This can happen whether those bills exist or not. And so there is no concession. It is either we fund these programs or we don't. In February, lawmakers passed legislation that would send money to existing emergency departments in the Chippewa Valley. Evers partially vetoed that proposal, allowing any health care facilities offering services in the area to apply for a portion of that $15 million. The committee's Republican co-chairs, Representative Mark Bourne and Senator Howard Mark Klein, criticized the governor's actions. Bourne and Mark Klein taking a similar stance on Tuesday, arguing the governor's choice to veto Republican bills allocating those funds funds is the reason why they are still on hold. We're not holding anything up. The, 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 the governor vetoed the, those bills and, and uh, Co-Chair Bourne and I sent a letter to the governor last month and we were pretty explicit in that letter uh, and said, Governor, if you're serious about this, sign the bill. He's trying to make up fake meetings and trying to put the blame on other people and deflect it because he's desperate to remove that blame from him. He could have taken the deal. He decided there were things in there that he couldn't take. That's his choice. That's his right. But that's how he chose to stop that program. Democratic Representative Deb Andraka made repeated claims during the committee's public hearing that all members needed to be present for Evers' special session. But all GOP members walked out. Committee co-chair Howard Mark Klein making it clear the committee would adjourn for the remainder of the day. Andraka McGuire and Democratic Senator LaTanya Johnson voicing their frustrations with the divisiveness in their committee. This is a wake-up call for all of our constituents. While they continue to drink poisoned drinking water from their own taps, we're out knocking doors and asking them for their votes. So I think it's clear time that they take that into consideration and really take a good look at who they're sending back to this legislature to represent them. The governor is suing legislative Republicans, saying the GOP-controlled Joint Finance Committee has continued to override his executive powers. The case is in front of the state Supreme Court. Justices heard all the arguments for the case in April and will likely reconvene to offer statements in the coming weeks. We continue to follow developments in the Israel-Hamas war and the protests tied to the conflict. On Monday, Hamas accepted a ceasefire proposal and hostage deal that was proposed by Egypt and Qatar. Israel has not yet agreed to the proposal. As of Friday, ABC News sources said ceasefire negotiations had been put on pause. Campus protests over the Israel-Hamas war continued for a second week at UW-Madison. Thursday, demonstrators painted their hands red in solidarity and marched up to Bascom Hall. Once there, they held a die in lying down to symbolize the Palestinians who have been killed in the war in Gaza. Protest leaders in UW-Madison met several times this week about a potential resolution to end the encampments on Library Mall. Coming up, a presidential visit to Wisconsin, the investment President Biden highlighted during a stop at, in Racine County, and how state Republicans say Biden's policies have filled Wisconsinites.